because of what I understand, because of what I feel, I know that it's true. So it's the point to which the intellect and the emotion unite, and it forms the very real perception of the divine presence. And Muna is that we sense, we feel that the Shrina, that the Kodesh Baruch Hu, is in this world with us, and he's there with us. He's there the whole time. That's what the, that's what the Muna really is. It's possible for Avram, who is a prophet, a Navi, to grow in the Muna, and to believe in Hashem even more and more, to sense this perception, <coughs> have this perception of Hashem's presence even more and more, deeper and deeper. It's possible for Moshe Rabbeinu, the great, the one who received the Torah, and who's a Nehman Beisle, who's able to walk in Hashem's house, so to speak, understands all the concepts of the Torah. It's possible for Moshe Rabbeinu to sense this, to perceive this, this feeling of the Divine Presence more, or sometimes to even fall down a little bit from the levels that he's capable to achieve it, because it's a perception, it's a sense, it's an experience that we feel Hashem with us. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu describes himself as a Kael Amuna, that I am Hashem, who's there for you, that we could develop this relationship. So Amuna is something that's completely all-encompassing, that we feel the Shechina with us. And the Kabbalah says that this is a, a function of the Neshama, that this is something that our neshama can sense. It's not just something that we sense that we understand in our minds, but it's something that we have to get to our neshama. Every Jewish person has a neshama deep down. The problem is that we're in exile. It's covered over. We have distractions. We have, we have things that we go, we go astray sometimes. But every one of us has a neshama deep down. And our neshama has the capacity to truly sense Hashem's presence. It's part of, it's a chilet al kamimal, or the shama is a divine spark, and we have the capacity to perceive HaKadosh Baruch Hu in our daily lives. It's a, it's a function of the neshama. And what happens is that when a person has this sabuna, once a person realizes that Hashem is with him the entire time, he just transcends the physical, says the Chavanesh. Because now we, our, our neshama just comes out and we just rejoice and it's able to carry us this idea that Hashem is with us the entire time. It's a function of the soulless. It's something that, like the Chazanish says, it's an adinus hanefesh. It's something that just comes from the refinement of the soul. So the question is, how do we get to this level? How do we get? To, how, how do we have? I mean, how do we really access our neshama? My neshama is deep, very deep down. How do I uncover all the layers? And how do I access my neshama? Because the neshama is really what has the capacity to experience this, this to have these emotions, and to feel this, to feel this real emotion. So, Rav Bessler, in uh, Mithan al in the third volume, on, on, on page 161 of the third volume, so Rav Bessler gives us uh, five easy steps to get into a moon. So, I say they're easy, easy said, not, not necessarily easily done, but it's easily said. So, Rav Bessler says that he designed five steps to try to get to this level of a moon that we're discussing. He says the first level is the entry level. The first level of Muna is the entry level. So we have to be margil ourselves. We have to be mechanic ourselves. We have to accustom ourselves and habituate ourselves in just having awareness of Hashem. And even if we don't really feel it, right? We're not yet at these levels that we're describing here with Avram or with Moshe or Hinu. We're nowhere near that. But we want to feel, we want to get the entry level. We have to create an awareness. <coughs> so what Vesla says, that we have to do a few things, external things, that will just raise the awareness, heighten the awareness, that just to bring Hashem a little bit more into our lives, that we can just accustom ourselves to this. So he says that it's a good thing that we should always accustom ourselves, whenever we have the opportunity, to say Baruch Hashem, right? Somebody asks you how you're doing, right? Sometimes people just say Baruch Hashem, they don't answer how they're really doing, right? So I'm not saying you shouldn't really discuss how you're really doing, but if, if somebody says, how are you doing? How are things? So you first say Baruch Hashem. You say, Blessed is Hashem, right? Let's say, I'm going to do something. I'm planning on going somewhere. So if that's what says, we should stick in the Ezra Hashem with Hashem's help. In Yerza Hashem, if Hashem wants, what, aren't these just externalities? Aren't these just sayings? Aren't these just words? So if that's what says, it might be. We might not be on the level, but it's good to accustom ourselves just to bring Hashem into our lives, even externally. And just talk about Hashem whenever the opportunity arises, just in order to bring Hashem, to give ourselves a little bit more of a consciousness that Hashem is really there. If we talk about it, then the outside, our chitzonius, our external, will inspire us and it could make a rush and it can make an impact on the inside. He also says that davening is a tremendous opportunity because when we daven, 
we're actually speaking face to face to Hashem when we pray. So now, we might not know what the words mean, but we can pray it in any language we understand. We might not feel it. We might not be in the mood. But the fact that we're getting up there and we're standing before Hashem, we're doing an action, we're demonstrating that we're standing before Hashem and we're turning to Hashem for our needs, that is also a very powerful statement to ourselves that can create this kind of a connection because we're bringing Hashem into our lives. See, even if I'm not in the mood, even if I'm not having Kabbalah that day, it's hard for me to concentrate, I'm distracted, my mind is keeping me on wandering. But the fact that I'm getting up there and I'm trying to focus on talking to Hashem, that action is a powerful statement to myself that I want to bring Hashem into, into my life. And we have the opportunity that Chazal gave us, Birkas Hanenin, that every time we partake of the bounty that Hashem gave us, the food, we have a special bracha. We talk about Hashem, we, we, we thank Hashem for every little thing that Hashem gave us. Hashem gave us a coffee. We say, Shehakol Nyebitbaro. We say that we thank Hashem for having created everything with His Word. Hashem gave us delicious fruit. Thank you for creating the fruit of the tree. Thank you for creating the bread of the land. Every opportunity, whenever we taste something, whenever we partake, there are always beautiful blessings that we can make, all just to bring Hashem into our lives, to create an awareness. So this is an entry level. This is really why Chazal, this is really why our sages instituted these blessings. Because the Chazal, our sages want us to be thinking about Hashem, to talk about Hashem, to address Hashem at, at so many different opportunities in order to create a sense of awareness that Hashem is really with us. And what this does is, it's just an external way. If we talk about it, if we think about it, then it will be more in our minds than it was before. That's, that's the first way. This is, this is step number one. Step number one, we have to externally bring Hashem into our lives even before we feel ready to really feel it deep down. But we just, we, we're talking about Hashem all the time. The second thing he says is that this is getting a little bit deeper, and this is getting more penimious, this is trying to internalize Hashem a little bit more, to be more penimious, and he says we have to contemplate, we have to meditate, we have to look around, we have to see the world around us, we have to appreciate the beautiful world that God created, we have to realize by looking at the world how powerful and almighty Hashem really is, that he created such a beautiful world, everything fits together so well, the world is running so perfectly, the sun, the stars, the moon, planet Earth, the galaxies, everything Hashem created, and all God created all of this. We have to contemplate this, and we have to try to be inspired by the beautiful creation that how powerful Hashem is. So what this does is, it's taking the fact that we're now more aware of Hashem, because we've made blessings, we're making the brachas, we're davening, we're talking about Hashem whenever we can, we're attributing our actions, we won't be saying here to Hashem, if Hashem wants, if Hashem lets, with the help of Hashem, we're talking about Hashem. And now we start looking around, and we start taking in the world, and we see, we start to appreciate. Now, even if we don't see Hashem in every step that we take, and we're not zoicha, we don't merit to really feel Hashem in everything yet, but by looking at the world, and by appreciating and some things go the way we like, some things don't go the way we like. But appreciating the fact that we're alive, appreciating the fact that Hashem created such a beautiful world, this is a contemplation. And what this does is, it'll help us internalize more and more the fact that Hashem is really with us. Now, these, these first two steps, explains Rav Esther, is to bring Hashem into our lives. Right? We're, we're aware of Hashem, we're discussing Hashem more, and we're being inspired by the world that Hashem created such a beautiful world, the powers of Hashem. But now says Rav and this ties in very well with what the, uh, the Chazen Ish said, that the Chazen Ish says that the Mida of Emunah is really accessing the Nisham, right? It's really a function of the Nisham. And it comes from the fact that a person overcame his desires, and it comes from Kedusha. It comes from Kedusha. The Chazen Ish says, that as soon as a person has a muna, it should cause him to rejoice, and it should cause the person to transcend above his very body and become almost like an angel and just wrap himself in holiness. So Rav Esla says that after we start bringing Hashem into our lives, now we have to start accessing holiness. We have to start using Kedusha. Hashem gives us a beautiful Torah. Hashem gives us access to holiness. 
And this is something that we can't put our finger on. This is not a physical thing. This is Kedusha. It's something that generates a spirit of holiness. And this is how we'll bring our Neshama out into the open and really be able to experience this relationship with Hashem because we need our Neshama for that. So after we've brought Hashem into our lives a little bit, now we have to attach ourselves to holiness. So now Rabbi Bessel says it gets a little bit complicated because under this third category, there are three steps to attract, to, to cleaving the holiness. The first one is a very interesting thing. The first one is that we have to train ourselves to be yoide tamid ala emis. We have to train ourselves to always admit the truth, right? And this is not only in terms of philosophical discussions of, of, of the of the of the mitzvahs of the existence of Hashem. Even in our daily lives, we have to train ourselves to always be truthful. Sometimes, sometimes that just out of habit, somebody asks you a question, so I might just say, because I'm too lazy to think of the right answer, I just I just say whatever comes to mind. Or sometimes I don't speak with the accuracy to make sure that what I'm saying is totally accurate. So, Sergio Bessel, this is really, uh, this nida, this, this attribute of not being accurate and not being truthful and not admitting to the truth. Let's say I'm wrong. Admitting right away that I'm wrong. This is something that you need to really bring out the neshama. This is really an attribute of kedusha. Because if a person trains themselves to always recognize the truth when they see it, then every once in a while we get a glimpse of truth and we'll be trained to latch onto it, right? Because if we, if we create in ourselves the ability to lie to ourselves and overlook things, overlook the obvious, then when Hashem does show us something that's like a glimpse of the truth, sometimes there's an inspiration here, there's, there's an esoiris there, we hear something, we hear a good word here, we hear something that has the power to inspire us over there, if we train ourselves to recognize the truth for what it is, that'll make a tremendous impact. And this is a kedusha, it's a holiness, that we're training ourselves to recognize this, the, the, the inner speakings of our neshama, we'll become aware of our neshama. Rabbi Deslov there, he brings an archas, archas tzadikim, it's, it's the name of a sefer, the archas tzadikim, that if a person is always truthful with themselves and never deviates from the truth, even to themselves, even, so, even on things that are seemingly trivial, he never deviates from the truth. So the person will merit that even his dreams will be true. Because this is latching on, this is accessing our nisham. If a person trains himself to always speak the truth, then even his dreams will be true. And he'll merit a level of prophecy because nothing about that person is false. So I'm not going to have a dream that's Narishkeit. If I train myself to always be truthful, then even my subconscious will be already in tune with the emis, with the truth. So the first thing is, in order to try to access the neshama, to cleave to kedusha, we have to be truthful with ourselves. That way we train ourselves to recognize the truth when we see the truth. That's the first thing. The second thing, which also the Chazan Ish mentioned, that since emuna, feeling close to Hashem, is really a function of the neshama, so we have to really be in control of our desires because if we let our baser nature, if we let our, let our lusts or our baser nature, if we let it overcome us, then we can't really hope to be spiritual. If we want to really have holiness, we have to keep our desires in check. So Redesla says we should benefit from the world, we should enjoy the world in the context of a mitzvah, right? We should enjoy shabbos. We should enjoy food after we make a bracha. We should enjoy the food that Hashem gave us. But we should eat the food in order to be healthy, to be able to serve Hashem. We have to try to sanctify that which we do. Yiddishkeit, Judaism, it doesn't recommend that we stifle ourselves, or that we hold back, or that we try to afflict ourselves. We, want to, we also want to benefit. Hashem created this beautiful world, and we should enjoy the world. But it has to be in the context of a mitzvah. We have to realize that we're here to serve Hashem, and that everything that Hashem gave us is, is in order to better enable us to have a peace of mind to serve Hashem. So yes, we should enjoy everything that Hashem gave us, but we have to do it in the context of a mitzvah. And that's how we generate kedusha. That's how we elevate the world with us instead of being dragged down by everything and drowning in our physicality. That's how we get on top of it and we're in control of it and we elevate everything around us. So that's the second thing. So the Redesla says that what we're concentrating now in the third step is to try to cleave to Kedusha, and that's what brings out our Nishab, right? So, the third thing that we have to do to cleave to Kedusha is a positive thing. We have to actually cleave to Kedusha, which means not just to abstain, not just to only benefit from the world in the context of a mitzvah, 
but now we want to cleave to a Kaddish Baruch in a positive way, which means that we have to set aside time to study Torah, because Torah is the most holy thing that Hashem gave us. We have to set aside time to study Torah, and if we study Torah with enthusiasm, whether it's a, 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 a halacha, a, a, a mishnah, whether it's sometimes Gemara, whether it's something for, for Tfila, whether it's davening, whether it's Tehillim, everybody should spend time just delving a little bit into some area of Torah, whether it's Havacha, whether it's Tehillim, whether it's Navi, the stories of Tanakh, whatever, whatever meets your fancy, the person should delve into that a little bit with enthusiasm, because then you're really cleaving to Kedusha, and that's accessing the Torah that gives us this holiness, and that'll give us the spiritual energy to really uncover our neshama, and really get, get the fire going, get our neshama going. And this is the way, through davening with enthusiasm, praying, through making brachas with enthusiasm, through learning, this is the way to really strengthen and bring out our neshama. So just, the first way was Number one, we have to bring Hashem into our lives a little bit. We have to talk about Hashem. The second step is that we have to, on a deeper level, contemplate and look around us and appreciate the great things Hashem gave us, the world that He created. That's internalizing it a little bit more. And then we have to access our Hashem. Then we have to start strengthening the Kedusha, the, the component of sanctity that we all have, which is through always being truthful, being able to identify truth, and that'll get us into shape, that when we see something, we'll be inspired and we'll act on it, because we're trained to recognize the truth. The second thing was to overcome our desires and be able to only use the world in the context of a mitzvah, which means that we should enjoy the world, but we should remember that we're just doing it because we want to serve Hashem better. And the third thing is to try in a positive way to try to cleave to something holy, which is either the davening or the learning or picking a mitzvah and doing the mitzvah with enthusiasm, but that's really cleaving to something holy and that's really going to bring our neshama out to the surface and then we'll be able to experience this. <clears throat> okay, the fourth step, he says, of, of getting to these levels of emuna is that we should actually live with bitachon. We should train ourselves to have bitachon. We'll talk a little bit about bitachon is more how that interrelates with emunah. But bitachon means feeling the security with Hashem and feeling calm that Hashem is with us. Every day Hashem takes care of us. That when Hashem takes care of us today, there's a lot more Hashem has to take care of us tomorrow. We don't need to we don't need to be nervous today because how is Hashem going to take care of us tomorrow? Imagine if a person would, would be healthy, we're healthy, Baruch Hashem, and imagine if the person wouldn't enjoy their health because they're always nervous that tomorrow maybe I won't be healthy, right? So, so, so we're missing the opportunity of enjoying what we have while we have it. So bitachin means having the security and the peace of mind means that everything Hashem does for, with us is Hashem is with us all the way. And let's enjoy the gifts that we have while we have them, and let's live each day, day by day. Let's have a security, and let's live each, each minute, let's live to the fullest, because we know that Hashem is giving us this minute, and let's maximize this minute to the fullest. That's the leader of Bitaqa, right? Let's not frittle away this moment now, because I'm worried about how I'm going to do the next moment. That's really what the Eight Sahara does. The Eight Sahara says, don't maximize your time now, because spend your time worrying about what you're going to do next time, right? <laughs> right? That's not, that's not what Hashem wants. Each moment that we have, let's maximize that moment, and let's get a peace of mind, let's feel settled, and let's feel that we can focus and concentrate and live each moment to its fullest, because Hashem gives us this moment, and Hashem will give us the next moment. That's living with Bitachin. So after we've accessed having Hashem in our lives and internalizing Hashem, appreciating the world, appreciating Hashem's greatness, and having, having accessed the, the, the Kedusha aspect of ourselves, because now we do mitzvahs with enthusiasm, we learn Torah with enthusiasm, now let's use each minute to the fullest and realize that each moment that Hashem gives us is a gift, and let's have bitaka, let's have security that, let, that this moment was given to us to maximize, and then we'll worry about the next moment when the next moment comes. I'm not saying that we should be reckless. I'm saying that each moment was there as a gift to maximize that moment. And the fifth step, says Rav Dessler, 
once we've accomplished all of that, and this is a lifelong process, this is not something that we do in a week, this is something that we work on each step. The fifth step, he says, is now already if a person has accomplished all of this, a person became a holier person, a person became somebody who's thinking about Hashem, now the person can go to the fifth level where the 